<laughs> All right, my message title today is Believe Again. Believe Again. Let me start off with a story. I read about this little girl called Lindsay. Lindsay was five years old and she really wanted a kitten. So she went to her mom and said, Mommy, Mommy, please go and buy me a kitten. I really want a kitten. The mom said, no, we've got enough pets. You're not buying any more pets. No more kittens for you. Anyway, little Lindsay was very persistent. She went every day and bugged her mother, please let us buy a kitten, let us buy a kitten. The mom eventually out of frustration said, listen, if God gives you a kitten, we can keep it. But I'm not going to buy any kittens. So you know what little Lindsay done? She went outside to her backyard, got on her knees, and she prayed, please God, bring me a kitten. Her, wife, uh, the, her mother was in the kitchen, busy looking out the window, seeing all this, seeing little Lindsay get on her knees. And out of the blues, a little kitten came flying out of the sky oh, and fell right at the feet of little Lindsay. Amen. The mother was shocked. She nearly passed out. She went outside. She looked up. There was no lines, no trees. It was just like this cat fell out of the sky, oh. out of nowhere. The little girl picked up the kitten and said, look, mommy, God gave me a kitten. They found out later what happened. A few houses down, there was a kitten stuck in a tree. And what happened was the owner of the house wanted to get the kitten down, but his ladder was too short to get into the tree. So he got a rope, tied it to the branch of the tree, and he tied the other side of the rope to a car, the bumper of a car. So as the car gently go away, then the, the branch would go down, right? And it was getting just low enough for them to grab the kitten when the rope slipped. And all of a sudden, the branch went toing, yep. and the little kitten flew three houses up, yep. landed at the feet of little Lindsay. Wow. This man was shocked. He thought he killed the kitten. Little did he know, he was the answer to that little girl's prayer. God works in mysterious ways indeed. He knows how to put you at the right place at the right time. What I love about little Lindsay was her prayer of faith. She didn't doubt. The mother said, ask God. She went, got on her knees, and she asked God without a shadow of a doubt in her mind that God would deliver. You know what the problem is, I think, with Christians today? We struggle to believe. Yeah. We've lost our power to believe. We believe in God. We believe in the Bible, in Jesus. But we don't believe that He can do anything in our life today. And let me just ask, you just got to go to Lindsay, ask her, what does she think? She'll say, I pray to God if He gave me a kid. So why can't you pray to God? Yeah. <laughs> you see, we kind of believe that God is a God of miracles, but only in Bible times. No. And He's not active today in our lives. Let me tell you, He is. Yes. And the same God of miracles that done the miracles in the Bible is the same God that you serve today. Amen. That's what I was saying. Sorry. I was saying to Jenny, why am I at Rosa Mines? Yes. She said that God knows why. God knows why he is. He's got a purpose and he's sovereign all his body. Even though you don't see it, God knows he's working behind the scenes, knowing exactly what's going on in our life. What I need to do today is to stir your faith up again to let you believe again. Believe that God can change the circumstances. There's a verse in the Bible I want to read to you from Ephesians. This is what Paul says. Paul wrote the book of Ephesians. He says this, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power. Listen to those words. Incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe. That same power that raised Christ from the dead. The same thing what I'm here today is what Paul was trying to tell the church back then. He wants to let you know that there is incredible power that God has that He wants to unleash in your life. And it says for us. But the key word there is for us who believe. That's for us who believe in Him. So what the whole message today is, it's just to get you to believe again that God can change the situations, change the circumstances. And for that, we're going to look at a story in the Bible, a story you know well. It's a story of Lazarus. So let's read that. We're going to read from John 11. John 11, reading from 38 to 40. It says, Then Jesus, again deeply moved uh, with him, came to the tomb. Now it was a cave and a stone was laid against it. Jesus said, Remove the stone. Martha, the sister, the sister of the deceased, said, Lord, by this time there will be a stench, an odor, because he has been dead for four days. Mm -hmm. Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you believed, you will see my power in a great way. You will see God's glory. It's a story we know well of Lazarus. He has two sisters. Do you know what their names were? 
Martha, Martha and, and Mary. They lived in a place called Bethany, a little town about two kilometers from Jerusalem. At this time, uh, they were good friends with Jesus, by the way, really good friends. Uh, at this time, Lazarus, Lazarus got very sick, near to death. So Mary and Martha sent a word to Jesus. He was in another town on the east side of the Jordan <laughs> River. So it's about a day's travel. They sent word to Jesus, please come see Lazarus, your friend, pray for him and heal him. That was the expectation. When the message got to Jesus, you'd expect him to get up and run. But he didn't. The Bible says he stayed there for two more days on purpose. He stayed there for two more days. On the fourth day, he, he gets up and says, guys, to his disciples, let's go and visit uh, Lazarus. He's fallen asleep. They said, well, if you sleep and you'll just wake up and you'll be better. Then Jesus said, no, 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 he's dead. So they said, okay, well, let's go see. They get up and they travel the one day's journey to Bethany. As I said, just outside Jerusalem. Jesus isn't even inside the town yet. He's on the outskirts still coming in. Martha, the sister, runs towards him and says, Oh, Jesus, if you had just been here earlier, our brother would still be alive. Have you ever felt that God showed up too late? You prayed, you believed, and yet still your prayers weren't answered. This is how they felt. They were discouraged, depressed, upset, probably bitter towards Jesus. If he had only been here earlier, things would have been different. Are you all right, Jenny? I'm, I'm okay. Sure. You want some water? We can get you some. Uh, it'll be you there, uh, Jason. Can you get some water for Auntie Jenny, quick, please? She seems to be some coffee. In the kitchen. In the kitchen. She's just got a, a, a sore throat also. Jesus says to Martha, Take me to the place where you laid him. Take me to the place where you buried him, where you said it's over, where you stopped believing. You see, we all get to a place in our life, a circumstance, when we've got to make the decision. Do we believe in God or not? As I said, we believe that He saved us. But when it comes to difficult situations, I oh, know God, you can't deal with this. And then we say, no God, don't worry, I won't even pray to you because I know that you can't fix this. We all get to that point in life. And you've got to make the decision. Do you believe in the God who can do all things? Do you believe in God Almighty? You know what the Hebrew word for God Almighty is? El Shaddai. Can you say that with me, please? El Shaddai. It's a beautiful word. El Shaddai means God Almighty. There's a song that I used to sing back in the 90s. It's a, a song called El Shaddai. And I was just going to say that the part of the chorus. El Shaddai, El Elyon, Na Adonai. Isn't that beautiful? That's Hebrew. God Almighty, God Most High, I pray, Lord. It's a prayer. So when you get before God, before, most people don't even pray no more, but I want you to do that. Get before God on knees and say, God, I know that you're on the throne. I know that you're in control. You are the most powerful God, the most high God. You are God Almighty. And then you start your prayer and I pray. That, is, that, that leads you into what the miracle is going to be. So many of us, when we get in situations, we try and do it ourselves. And then God becomes a last resort. I don't want that to be you. When you're in the predicament, the problem, the trouble, go to God first. And just like this prayer, El Shaddai, El Elyon, Adonai. God, I know that you can do something. I know that you can change the situation. And God says to Martha and Mary, well, he says this, if you just believe again, then the situation will change. If you believe, you'll see my power again. Martha, she's the one who said, if you had been there earlier, my brother would be dead. He would still be alive. But then she changes and she says this, but even now I believe that you can raise him from the dead. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. Two words, even now. I think we need even now faith. It's faith that says no matter what the problem is, no matter how overwhelming the situation may be, even now, God, you can do something about it. Even now that Lazarus is dead, you can raise him, Lord. That's what we need. A uh, faith that says, even now, Lord, my marriage is broken, but you can restore it. Even now, Lord, although I'm sick, you can restore me and heal me again. That's a faith that we need. Even now, faith. Can you say that with me? Even yeah, now, now, faith. No matter what the odds are against you, how impossible it looks, you look to God and say, God, I know that you can change it. That's a faith that we need to have as Christians. We need to believe that God can make a difference in our lives.
you know there's a certain group of the Jews called the Sadducees. Have you heard of them before? Sadducees. They believe that when you die, your spirit remains with the body for three days. Yeah. Right? And in that time, you can be resuscitated. You can still come alive if you're in hospital or whatever. You'll be sick. You may be dead, but there's a chance that you can come alive. But on the fourth day, it's tickets. There's no way you're ever going to come alive again because the spirit then leaves the body and goes to God. Do you know if you remember the story I just told you? What day did Jesus rock up there? On the fourth day. There's no coincidence. Because Jesus wants to show them that not only will they see his power, but the doubters will also see his power in a great way. Sometimes God shows up late in your life. Sometimes a miracle comes late, not only for your sake, but for the people around you. Those people that said, you'll never get better, your marriage will never be restored, it's all, you'll never get a job, it's for those people. So when the miracle happens in your life, the other people will say, wow, that's awesome. This must be a miracle of God. So sometimes God shows up late, not only for your sake, but for the doubters and naysayers. So they will have no doubt that God can perform a miracle in their lives too. What I want you to do today is to be a believer and not a doubter. We need to start believing in Him. Take God out of the box. I think I've said that to you before, that we keep God in a box. We put limits on God, don't we? And you must understand that being human, we have human limitations, and we place those same limitations on God. So we place Him in a box and we say, God, you can only do this, because that's what I believe, that's my opinions, that's my interpretations. What I need you to do today is take God out of the box and let God be God. He cannot be contained. He cannot be limited. He's the great God of the universe. The only limitation that God has in your life is the limitations that you place on Him by putting Him in a box. We need to believe again. This is what Joshua done. Do you know Joshua in the Bible? There's a story of Joshua when he comes against five kings. Five Canaanite kings come and attack him. The reason for this is they didn't like the Gibeonites. There was a small little tribe called Gibeon. And what happened was when Joshua came into the land of Canaan, he was conquering the land. They just destroyed Jericho. What happened at Jericho? Do you remember? The walls came crumbling down. Next in Joshua's sight was Gibeon, the Gibeonites. So they decided, wait a minute, you're not going to come and attack us. So they went to Joshua and made a peace treaty with him. They said, listen, uh, we'll be friends, but don't attack us, don't kill us. The other kings in the land, they saw that as a sign of betrayal. So they went against the small little uh, tribe of Gibeon. So the Gibeonites went to Joshua and said, Joshua, you've got to help me fight these guys. I can't fight these guys. So Joshua done. They got in the battle the whole day. It was coming to the uh, late afternoon. The sun was starting to creep down on the horizon. And Joshua knew that if the sun goes down, the battle's over, the enemy will go back, get more reinforcements, come back for the next day, and there's a good chance they'll be wiped out. So you know what he does? In that time of desperation, against all odds, Joshua prays a prayer, which is probably the greatest miracle in our physical world. And you know what it is. He looks up and he says, Son, stand still. Can you believe he prayed a prayer like that? Son, stand still. God, give me a little bit more daylight. I want to finish these guys off. I want to defeat them. I need you to stop the sun. Have you ever prayed a prayer like that? No. What boldness. What brazenness. You must have thought, well, what did God think of that? God's on his throne in heaven and he hears someone pray that prayer. You must have thought, what do you, who do you think I am, Joshua? Wait a minute. I'm God. I can do that. I can do anything. Do you want the sun stopped? Sure, Joshua, for you, the sun stopped. It said that never before and never since has there been a day where God answered the will of a man. It was such a big, bold prayer that God was even shocked. He said, wow, can you believe this guy asking me to let the sun stop in the sky? And God did it. And everybody was in amazement. Joshua went on to win a great victory for the Israelites. Now, I'm not asking you to stop the sun, but I am asking you to believe again. If God can stop the sun for Joshua, what can't he do? In your life. Amen. We need to start believing that the miracle working God we serve in the Old Testament and in the Bible time is the same God you serve today. And that same power that God released to Joshua is the same power he released in your life. Why? Because we believe in him. Let me conclude with one more story. Do you have time for one more story? 
It's a story of little Jamie. Jamie was seven years old. She worked on a farm, not work. She lived on a farm, a family farm. And on this farm, they had cows. They reared cows. It just so happens that there was one of the cows that were going to give birth. All right? She was pregnant, one of the cows. And, she, and little uh, Jamie really wanted a little calf of her own. For many years now, she always wanted a little cow of her own. And her father had already decided that they're going to be selling all the cows off. So even after this calf comes out, he was going to sell all the cows off. Ah, oh, but little Jamie really wanted the calf. She went to her father and said, Daddy, please can't I keep this calf for me? I really want a cow of my own. He said, no, no, it's not going to listen. He's selling all them off. Day after day, she went back to him. Please, Daddy, can't I have this calf? Can't I keep this cow that's going to be born? Eventually, she wore him down. And he said, I'll, I'll make a deal with you. If the calf comes out black, you can keep it. But if it comes out spotted or brown, like all the other cows we had, then we're going to sell it off. So the odds was in his favor. She didn't know any better. She went up to the room and she started to pray. Jamie got on her knees and said, God, please give me this calf and let it be black. And let it be no doubt that people know that this calf is going to be mine. Every day, persistently, she went and prayed. Not a shadow of a doubt. God, let this calf be mine. Let it be black. Well, a few weeks later, the calf was born. Do you know what color it was? It was black. black. Not only was it black, but it also had, shame. It had a white little patch in the form of a J. It's almost like God was saying, not only will it be black, but it's also going to have a J because it's yours, Jamie. This is going to be your call, and nobody's going to touch this call but you. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, the God we serve can raise the dead. Praise the Lord. The God we serve can let kittens fly out of the sky. Amen. The God we serve can stop the sun in the sky. Amen. And the God we serve can make a calf black Amen. with a J on its forehead. Amen. And now, I'm not asking you to stop the sun. I'm not asking you to raise the dead. But I am asking you to believe it. Amen. Amen.